Around 100,000 pieces of traditional artwork are stolen each year around the world, and the black market for stolen art is valued at between $6 billion and $8 billion annually. But with the new era of digital art, these numbers are increasing exponentially. Artist communities on social media are going through a grim time. If an artist wants to share artwork on social media, that means opening it up to the public, as their followers can amplify it by sharing it or support the artist. But artists are doing the opposite. They are locking down their accounts, suspicious of new followers and afraid to lose their hard work. It's all because of NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, which are causing chaos for artists online. An NFT is a unique token that designates ownership of a digital good. Non-fungible means that it's unique and can't be replaced with something else. You can think of an NFT as a digital certificate that says someone owns a piece of artwork. The artwork can be a picture or music NFT. or video or anything, like a tweet. Well, most of the buzz around NFTs right now comes from the fact that they're being sold for huge amounts of money. An artist known as Beeple sold a JPEG file of 5,000 individual images for $69 million. Another artist, Grimes, sold various works to make $6 million in a weekend. The immediate appeal of such a trend is obvious. It seems like a new boom with lots of money on the table for clever people. While the NFT investment gold rush has made some artists millionaires, it also appears that cyber criminals are making millions out of this NFT boom by stealing digital artwork. But how are these cyber criminals stealing digital art? They are using these tricks and attacks. Stealing somebody's art. Artists are reporting that their work is being stolen and sold on NFT sites without their permission. To understand how it's done, first, we need to explain a bit more about NFTs. When someone makes, or mints, an NFT, the token they create is permanently tied to a unique digital or physical object. Normally, that is a URL of the artwork. So when someone buys an NFT for a digital artwork, they're not buying the artwork, but the digital URL that represents the artwork. Owning the NFT doesn't actually mean you will be the owner of the digital artwork. There's nothing stopping someone from saving the same artwork image and selling it again as a new NFT. No one controls who can make an NFT. The only barrier to theft is profit. The seller might not get as much for an NFT that hasn't been verified by the artist. Giphy has warned that people are turning user-created GIFs from its site into NFTs. Many artists have started checking sites like OpenSea and Rarible to see if their work has been minted without their permission. On OpenSea and Rarible, two major NFT platforms, you don't have to verify you own something. Verifying yourself on these platforms is also not difficult. Copyright infringement. In order to trade NFT, it must be signed by the seller in a process known as minting. Similar to a painter's signature on their painting, this feature is intended to link the NFT to its creator. Things can go wrong when minters lie about their identity. For example, an NFT purchaser might assume that he purchased the underlying art of Harry Potter. However, in reality, the seller is not the copyright owner and doesn't own the exclusive right to copy, distribute, modify, publicly perform, and publicly display the art. Thus, somebody can sell you copyright-protected art and another cybercriminal can blackmail you for buying a stolen copyrighted art, thus extorting money from you. Royalties Scam Many platforms enable royalties in NFT, which are payments made to a creator every time a copy of their work is purchased. Whenever the artwork changes hands on secondary markets, the artist gets a certain percentage for every trade. Smart contracts written into the code of NFTs allow for the distribution of royalty funds to the creator each time the work is resold. Fraudsters can sell NFT with smart contracts without clearly mentioning the royalty payment condition, thus scamming the buyer. Automated NFT Bots Attack Twitter founder Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet from 2006 as an NFT for 2.9 million US dollars. The company that sold his tweet states that Owning any digital content can be a financial investment as it holds sentimental value and creates a relationship between collector and creator. P. 
People buy tweets for the same reason they pay for memorabilia, either for sentimental reasons or because they think they'll make money. And cyber criminals are taking advantage of this. They are using an automated NFT tweet minting bot with the name at tokenized tweets. The bot creates NFTs of tweets without alerting the owner of the tweet. Twitter user simply has to mention the bot below a tweet for that tweet to be made into an NFT. Many people have seen cyber criminals mentioning at tokenized tweets beneath their tweet. And most of these tweets end up for auction on OpenSea, one of the largest NFT marketplaces. Malware attacks. Artists have been reporting on Twitter that they lost access to their wallets after being approached by cyber criminals to create new digital art. Cyber criminals are approaching artists via Instagram, Twitter DM, or via email. They are using fake or compromised social media accounts to target artists using different social engineering tricks. Cyber criminals are using redline malware for this attack. This malware allows stealing username, password from browsers, and stealing art files from devices. This malware also steals crypto wallet information, both from browser extensions as well as typical wallet.dat files. The wallets this malware can take control of are Yuri Wallet, Tronlink, Nifty Wallet, MetaMask, Math Wallet, Coinbase, Binance Chain, Brave Wallet, Garda Wallet, Equal Wallet, and BitApp Wallet. Cybercriminals hide the malware in an SCR file, which is a screensaver extension. The file is usually big in size, about 800 megabytes, but the malware inside is only 175 kilobytes. The cybercriminals have increased the file size to cheat security software, as some antivirus may not even scan a file this large. And once the artist will click on the file, their device will be infected with malware. Redline works pretty fast, and a few minutes are enough to leak all your data and take control of all accounts. Attacking the art platform. Recently, a number of Twitter accounts started tweeting about the loss of NFTs in their nifty gateway accounts. Nifty Gateway is a digital art online auction platform. One Twitter user claimed to have lost more than $150,000 worth of the collectible tokens. Another claimed his credit card on file with Nifty was used to purchase more than $10,000 in NFTs, which were, in turn, allegedly stolen along with the rest of the collection. Cybercriminals breached into the Nifty Gateway user accounts by mostly stealing user passwords that didn't have the two-factor authentication enabled. The platforms don't have control of an NFT once it is stolen. Nifty Gateway knows exactly who committed the fraud, but thanks to a few loopholes, the cyber criminals managed to pull off their heist legally. Sleep minting. This trick was discovered by the artist who is called the Banksy of NFTs, under the pseudonym Monsieur Person. The NFT system uses digital smart contracts, through which the work is digitally signed by the artist. And he found some vulnerabilities in smart contracts that forces an artist to unconsciously assert ownership, just as a sleepwalking disorder can force someone to dance out of their bedroom while in a deep sleep. He has created a project called NFT Theft. Exploiting these vulnerabilities, he created an alleged second edition of digital artwork that was sold for $69.3 million. If cyber criminals start exploiting these vulnerabilities, the NFT market bubble will burst soon. So what can be done to protect the digital art? Well, number one, ensure you are using the latest versions of software and operating systems and install an antivirus. Number two, when you get any file or link, scan it with your antivirus first or upload the file to VirusTotal. Number three, create unique and strong passwords and enable two-factor authentication on all accounts. Number four, Use a hardware instead of a software wallet, and verify the security settings in your wallet. Number five, you can use DMCA copyright complaint if somebody steals your art. Number six, if you receive a new request to create art, stop and think first. Ask yourself these questions. Is this coming from a reputable account or from a totally new account? You can also Google any information they send to further verify their claims. And do you have any reviews of their public profile, if any? While NFTs may be booming, the digital art world is still in its infancy, which means anybody can find ways to make millions without fear of law in the NFT gold rush. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and support us on Patreon.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new video updates.